He's got the tattoos. Let's see. Uh, let's see if I can find this verse here. Leviticus 19, verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. All right, so uh, if there was any question if this guy was a sinner or if he was perfect, he's not perfect. All right, make no mistake about it. First Corinthians 11, verse 14. Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? That's long hair, huh? So, so that you might understand, this guy is calling God a liar. All right, keep that in mind. There are more Hindus than Protestants. Let's go back to the very first thing he says. Objected to as assuming facts, not in evidence. And the Bible tells us that he did all of that in just six days. But the Bhagavad Gita, which is centuries older than the Bible, implies the Bhagavad, the Bhagavad Gita. All right, so... Let's go to Genesis 1. <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. What? This Bhagavad Gita, this came before the beginning. Uh, Lord Krishna? Um, seriously. You're just making stuff up. It implies that the Hindu Godhead created life on Earth closer to four billion three hundred and twenty million years ago. Yeah, was he, was you there? Was he there? Which is much much closer to the actual age of the Earth, according to science. And science. Oh, well, according to science. Okay, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one because science is full of liars, right? It really should override even our favorite folklore. After all, Protestant Christians like to say the Catholics are not Christian at all, and if they're not... That they are not Christian. Catholics are not Christian, and this world is not full or dominated by Christians. We are in a very few minority. If they're not, then Christianity is only the fourth largest religion after... Hey, it's it's not even that big, fella. This is a and there are more Hindus than Protestants or even Catholics. No matter what your religion is, you'd have to agree that most of the world is heading in what you would call a wrong... The truth... Yeah, that's right. He's actually right about that. The truth is not dependent on majority. All right, let's make that clear. No matter what your religion is, you'd have to agree that most of the world is heading in what you would call a wrong direction because of... It's been heading in the wrong direction since the very beginning. We have evidence... Example after example, all the way from the beginning, Adam and Eve are in the garden, and they screwed up. And then the people before the flood, then the days of Noah, they screwed up. And then the people just been screwing up ever since the beginning. So you're right. It's going in the wrong direction. That's why we need a Savior. Because of their faith. So faith is unreliable. Now, we need whoa, instead, wait, 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 what? Now, hold on a second. Well, I, what? Hold on. Because of their faith. 
agree that most of the world is heading in what you would call a wrong direction because of their faith. So faith... Well, because of their faith? Wait a second. Where, where'd that come from? The world is heading in what you would call a wrong direction because of their faith. Agree that most of the world is heading in what you would call a wrong direction because of their faith. The, the, most of the world is headed in the wrong direction because of their faith, meaning the faith of the Christian. Uh, wow. Huh? You wondering why I'm being so tough on this guy? It's unbelievable. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. See, he's blaming everything, all the sins of the world, he's blaming it on Christians. As if this guy never sins. Huh? So faith is unreliable. Faith we is unreliable. We need, we need what? Instead, an objective measure that is dependent. Instead of an objective measure. What in the hell is that? Dependent on actual factual evidence rather than adherence to tradition that can only be followed on blind credulity. Let's take a closer look. But well, then he doesn't even he doesn't even present any. He says, "Oh, we need objective blah 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 blah," blah and then doesn't present any at all. Instead, he turns it back over to objective this fellow. Measure that is to be and not with I got my own problems with this guy. He don't have the right Bible for one thing. Bull says here. Oops. Space, time, and light. Uh, uh, Except that's not what the Bible says. It doesn't even imply whether God created space and time. Space time was already here. In fact, the earth was already... Well, okay. Now, what do you... Whoa, whoa, what was that last thing he said? My brain's working a little bit slow. Hold on a second. God created space and time. Space time was already here. In fact, the earth was already here. In fact, the earth was already here. Good night. Have you ever read the Bible, sir? Sir, stupid. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was here before the earth. This guy's a genius. Absolutely brilliant. Space and time. Space time was already here. In fact, the earth was already here. The earth was already here before God created the earth. That's just brilliant. Man, God. I wonder how much marijuana this guy smokes. Because the Creation Week was written poetically. You might want to dial this down a little bit. The Creation Week was written poetically. Let's see. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was up without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. There's nothing poetic about that. It's just laying down the facts, Jack. And... God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Now, this is important to understand. And God called the firmament heaven. Right, so in the beginning God created the heaven, and now he's adding another heaven. And so when we go to Genesis 2, and it says heavens, and God... And this, you know, here, let me read it for you, because I didn't screw everything up. Thus the heavens, notice the plural, thus the heavens and the earth were finished. See, it started out heaven, and then it was finished heavens because of what we just read there in verse 8. Right? And, uh, let's see, where am I at here? And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas and God saw that it was good and God said let the earth bring forth grass 
the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the third day this is not poetry I, if you've never read this you say whatever you want how would you know you never read it and one possible interpretation is to imagine that you're standing outside in the dark imagine if you will a time and a place imagine 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 where have i heard that word at before and god saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination imagine of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually medically and one possible interpretation is to imagine that you're standing outside in the dark when it is darkest before the dawn as they say then as you scan the horizon you perceive that there is light in the east but not all at once yeah, it's so not like turning on a light switch is, instead you notice that as the moments pass the sky slowly begins to illuminate. this is all being recorded as it does that puts the land in contrast still in the dark Created, formless and man void, made. because you can't yet discern any details. Note that at this point in the poem, so this could only come from God, dawn, representing a beginning, not man. You can't yet make out not any this details. Not this big-bellied imagination still right shrouded here. in darkness. And while there is already light in the morning sky, we have not yet seen the sun. Which you know kind of brings up a question: How could there have been a day without the sun? Because that wasn't created till later. There is an answer. Wrong answers don't count. I know that your favorite fairy tale says that the Earth was the very first and most important thing to exist at the center of the whole universe. But the Oops. Oopsie. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the Earth. It was the very first and most important thing to exist at the center of the whole universe. But the Bible is not even on speaking terms with reality. And not everyone is a... But the Bible is not even on speaking terms with reality. And not everyone is a pretender imagining a world... Bad guy and a little god. The Bible is not even on speaking terms with reality. And not everyone is a pretender imagining a world of make-believe. Some of us care what the truth is. And the science shows that the Earth... John 14, verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes unto the Father but by me. partner you're in a lot of trouble the earth didn't begin at the same time as the rest of the universe assuming that the universe began at all which some cosmologists doubt because matter apparently always existed in some some cosmologists doubt he's putting all his faith in cosmologists not just one but the collective and he's gonna pick and choose what he has faith in at all which some cosmologists doubt because matter apparently always existed in some form so there was never how would they know how would you know where are you getting this information at he's basing everything on facts on facts and not on fairy tale that that's what his claim was and now he's basing his views on fairy tales and not facts absolutely not guy is an absolute liar now of course you got to understand if you are a liar you you're incapable incapable of telling the truth there's no truth in this gentleman right here and the earth formed roughly 10 billion years after cosmic inflation <laughs> this is just ridiculous okay i think i've had enough but come on nothing and the earth formed roughly 10 billion years after cosmic inflation after cosmic inflation 
Hey, this guy's all about the truth. Doesn't believe in fairy tales. Think about that. It's all about the truth. Doesn't believe in fairy tales, imaginations, no more. Right. Bad guy in a little coat. And this is just ridiculous. But you know what? The thing is, a whole lot of people out there, even people that claim to be Christian, agree with this fellow right here. That the six day creation is a fairy tale, and whatever nonsense this guy is spewing is the truth. There are a lot of people out there. We are in a war, fellas. We are in an absolute war. Who will save your soul if you won't save your Summon a bust down on Poland. 